Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and today we are headed to Memphis for another tasting. Long distance information, get me Memphis, Tennessee. Name the artist. While you're thinking about that, actually I can think of two people who did that song and actually had a hit with it. Um, <laughs> interesting too, the concept of actually picking up a phone and asking the operator to dial a number for you. Um, how many people today have ever done that? You're probably my age or older, likely older than even me, but uh, yeah. Old school, man, that's the way it used to be done back in the day, but um, gonna do a tasting today and doing a tasting of Riverset Rye Unfiltered, 93 proof. Now, this may look familiar to you if you've been watching the channel for a little while because about a month ago, I did a tasting on this, which was a store pick barrel proof at 117.6 uh, proof. And I'm, I'm telling you, Heath Bar, I love this. This was actually really impressive and shocked me to the core. So I'm scared. I can't. I'm scared of that one because it said smooth on the label. This one says smooth on the label too. So again, it's making me nervous because I'm like, I don't really like smooth whiskey. I want a whiskey that's going to speak to me. Tell me something. Don't just go down my gullet and, you know, give me a buzz. That's not me. I want something that I can taste, enjoy. Um, when I was 18 to 21, I was interested in getting a buzz. You know, now it's much more about the tasting experience and being more of a connoisseur of whiskey. So, coming from tennis, Tennessee, this is actually not distilled by um, BR Distilling, who makes Blue Note and Riverset Rye. It comes from an outside source. You have to kind of guess where it may come from. It definitely comes from Tennessee. It's not an MGP rye. It is 95.5, which people who know MGP will go, oh, well, they have a 95.5, meaning 95% rye, 5% malted barley, and uh, aged at least four years on this one. Um, the thing I'm going to say about this is that the store pick was probably a bit more expensive. This is a very affordable whiskey, so if this hits the palate the right way, and sings, then I put it with the Nelson's Greenbriars and the other whiskeys that are trying to be affordable, quality whiskeys, Elijah Craig, those kinds of whiskeys, Four Roses, all of those whiskeys that have, you know, really established themselves in that $30 range. Um, and right off the bat, and this is a rye versus uh, those being bourbons, for Tennessee whiskeys. So it's, it's a little bit different animal, but I'm trying to think of what ryes are really good value ryes. I think of Rittenhouse. To me, Rittenhouse is almost like a, it's a rye for the bourbon drinker. It, it has enough corn in it that it really bridges the bourbon fan over into drinking rye whiskey. Because once you get into ryes that are true ryes, that, you know, they are going to be 80, 90 percent or more rye, then you're going to get a lot more herbal character. You're going to get a lot less of that uh, caramel, sort of uh, buttery, uh, vanilla kind of thing going on in the whiskey and, and less bite. You're going to get more you know, either herbal, floral, rye is really an interesting grain and very diverse. So um, makes for some um, interesting discussions when you're nosing a, uh, a rye whiskey. <sighs> nice herbally rye coming off the nose. I'm not getting the Heath Bar. <laughs> I'm hoping it's on the palate because that's really where it was on, on the other. Hint of vanilla, nice sweet. I mean, I almost want to say floral in a way, 
Um, this is not a heavy rye. This is a nice, fragrant rye that hits your nose. I'm trying to determine if there's like a, like a, a brown sugar maybe coming in. It's just adding a nice note of sweetness to this whiskey, but it's not aggressively sweet. It's just, it's just freshening that rye up and making that rye really kind of um, sing. Cheers. Mmm. 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 It's there. Oh, it's not as aggressive, or I won't say aggressive, that's a bad term. It's not as in your face, that heath bar, but it is there. We get kind of that toffee, maybe even a little chocolate note out of that rye. Um, definitely subdued versus the uh, 117 um, proof whiskey. But that's to be expected. Yet, I'm not getting where they keep selling this as smooth. It is not smooth. It is flavorful. It is. It has a, a, a punch of spice that is not overly aggressive. It's just a really nice punch of spice. And this juicy apple thing that's coming in on the end of the whiskey that is just wonderful um this it, i mean there's there's notes of char in there um i get a little bit cinnamon red hot with that heat it's not really a peppery heat it's more of like a a fireball heat but it's not as aggressive as a fireball like like i say i do the demonstration with a fireball that you have to pull the thing out of your mouth because it just gets too hot at one point um it doesn't get to that point it's actually a really nice rye whiskey and there's a lot going on in this whiskey it's it's it is a uh there's there's a wide scale of diverse flavors and but they all work really nicely together and thank you for that heath bar because to me I, I so love heath bars and when i get that kind of toffee flavor with a little bit of a of a chocolate uh, twinge to it. Wow. I mean, that just, it hits my palate just right. Now, if, if what I'm saying to you doesn't sound interesting, you're not going to like this whiskey as much as I do. If you're not a fan of Heath bars, then you're, you're probably not going to like this. I get the Heath bar ice cream cones. I mean, or, uh, uh, popsicles, you know, they got uh, vanilla ice cream and they're coated with, uh, Heath bar with the, with the, the peanuts and, um, and that toffee and, Caramel. Oh man. Oh, I gotta go to the store, man. I have got to go to the store because now I'm craving Heath Bar. I don't know if anybody else gets Heath Bar out of this, but I definitely do. And this is another one of those whiskeys. I have had this whiskey for, again, well over a year. And you can see how much I've had out of it. And it sat on my shelf, and I'm like, okay, you know, I mean, I'll get to it at some point, but smooth. I'm just not, I'm not excited about it. I need to get excited about it, because, I mean, that is a really great whiskey, and I hope they keep making them this way, because this is definitely worth the money. We're talking about, you know, a $30 whiskey, and um, sometimes I'll be like, you know, if I say it's good... But its value, then you can sort of consider it to be very good in its price range. In this case, I, I would put this up against many ryes. I think this is a really, really nice, unique rye, and one that is definitely worth picking up, especially for $30 a bottle. I mean, come on, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, how many Heath bars are there in this bottle? Of, uh, of whiskey, so, yeah, and it's got such a nice fragrant nose, and maybe there's a little bit of chocolate coming in on the nose. I get that with rye sometimes, where there's this cocoa effect that will come in, and uh, oh, 
it just gives that, and it's so nice. Nice spices in there and everything. This is a very good whiskey. Very good on any price scale. Mmm. Very nice. If you enjoyed the video, please like if you got value from it especially, and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Ring the bell if you want to make sure that you're there whenever the videos are a little less daily. And, uh, you know, we can, uh, uh, they get spread out a little bit so you don't miss any of, uh, of the upcoming videos. And uh, until next time, cheers and slodge of awe. It's my bottle. Keeping it. Mmm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Mm.